Hello and welcome to another video on timer interrupts. In this video, we will be proceeding to talk about the registers. So our goal in the series of videos is to understand the Arduino timer interrupts. And as I have said earlier, there are three timers, timer 0, 1 and 2. In this particular video, we will be talking about the related registers with these timers and their associated interrupt vectors. So the first register that we shall be talking about is the timer control register. This is basically a 16-bit register which exists in two parts, TCCR XA where X refers to the timer 0, 1 or 2 and TCCR XB. So here I have circled three bits, two bits in the uh, control register a, part A and one bit in the control register part B. These are the WGM bits. Then there are three bits which I have underlined. The CS00, 01 and 02 bits. These are a part of the TCCR XB register. These three bits help us to set the prescaler that I just spoke about. So here are details from Atmos datasheet on the microcontroller AT328P. So this says that to maintain a prescaler value of 8, you need to maintain the bits as 0, 1, 0. For 64, it needs to be 0, 1, 1 and so on. So this is going to be our guidance for setting the bit values to get the desired value of prescaler that we want. Before we dive deeper into setting the bits for the desired value of the prescaler, I will be talking a bit about bitwise operations. The first bitwise operator is the bitwise OR operator. It operates as per this truth table. As you can see here that if an existing value is 1 and I apply a 1 to it, then the result remains 1. So this table clearly indicates that if I apply a 1 to any value 0 or 1, then the value gets set as 1. On the other hand, if I apply a 0 through a bitwise OR operator, then the original value gets retained. So if I want to set the 4th and the 5th bits to 1, then I would be doing a bitwise OR operator as illustrated here. Then there is a bitwise AND operator. So the bitwise AND operator, if I apply a value of 0, then the bit gets cleared. If I apply a value of 1, then the bit remains uncleared. So this is kind of useful in clearing some of the bits. So here I have shown an example in which the bits at 4th and 5th position get retained and the remaining bits get cleared. The third bitwise operator that is important in this context is the left shift operator. Its syntax is as shown here. So if I do 1 left shift 3rd bit then the 3rd bit gets set as 1 and all the other values are 0. Similarly, we have a right shift operator. Now we will see the use of these operators in setting the desired prescaler value. So as per the table that I just showed you, the prescaler value for 256 has to be 100. And this has to be set in the TCCR 1B register. So the first step is to do a bitwise OR for the TCCR 1B value with a left shift operator operated on CS12. So what I am doing is, I am doing a bitwise OR with the value bit 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0 and CS12 is the third bit. So that bit is set to 1 and the other two bits are 0. So as we have just seen, what a bitwise OR does is that the zeros retain the bits and OR with 1 always gives 1. So what this does is that all the bits in the TCCR1B register are retained as it is except for the third bit which gets set to 1 and that's what we want to do. So the next value that I have to set is to set the CS11 bit to 0. In order to do this, I first set the CS11 bit to 1. Then I invert the value using this tilde. And then I do a bitwise AND of the result with a TCCR1B value. So basically I am doing a bitwise AND with bit 
1111111101 that is there's a zero at the cs11 position and at all other positions we have a one and when we do bitwise and just as we had seen a little while later one retains the bits and a bitwise and with zero gives us zero so this basically clears the bit at cs11 sets it to zero and leaves the rest unchanged similarly we do tccr 1b and equal to tilde 1 left shift operator cs10 so this again sets this bit the rightmost the left uh, the rightmost bit to zero and so we by operating these three commands we are able to set the prescaler value to 100 or an effective value of 256 the second thing that i would like to talk about is the waveform generation mode bits in this i shall be talking about the ctc mode which involves setting the wgm02 to 0 wgm01 to 1 and wgm00 to 0 so by setting this what happens is the timer on compare match mode is initiated what this means is that the timer can either go to a maximum value on overflow instead of doing that i set an intermediate value in the ocra register and this intermediate value decides when the timer would get triggered for example if for timer 0 the intermediate value happens to be 100 then instead of going up to 255 timer 0 will trigger an interrupt when it hits the value of 100 and when this interrupt gets triggered because the ctc mode is enabled the timer gets reset to 0 now there are two further registers the tcntx register which is basically the actual timer or counter register this is the register which gets incremented as the timer runs in case of timer 0 and timer 2 it's a 8 bit register and for timer 1 it's a 16 bit register and then we have the ocrxa register which stores the value for the a value that is the output compare register a value so this is the threshold at which the interrupt would get triggered in case we don't want it to count up to the maximum value and so now we have three modes one mode is to let the timer run up to the um, overflow limit the other is to get it to um, trigger an interrupt when it reaches value a and one more option is to let it trigger an interrupt when it reaches value b and how do we select between these three modes for this we have the timsk or timer counter interrupt mask, mask register and in this by setting the relevant bit we can decide which mode the timer would be operating on so this completes our discussion of all the registers and to summarize the timers are associated with specific registers and in these registers there are specific bits which need to be set to certain values by setting it to these certain values we get the timer to behave in specific ways and these specific ways are enabling the timer itself getting the timer to trigger an interrupt when it reaches the maximum value triggering the timer when it reaches a certain specific value intermediate value and on reaching this intermediate value the timer can be configured either to restart set it back to zero or it can be set to even continue the count thank you that's all for this video and i'll have one more video in which i'll be covering a practical example with this